Hi, this is Stefan from SK Mouthpieces in New York City. Today I have this um, Autolink Florida Supertone Master, no USA, up for a refacing. Some of the uh, complaints that the client has with this mouthpiece is that the mouthpiece sounds very shrill and that the uh, reed vibrates unusually strong and it generates a lot of background noise. And then it doesn't respond well in the low range either. The low C sounds incredibly hard. And it should remain at a 7. So it's marked a 5 star. So I guess it's been opened up to a 7. So let's just have a quick look. So that's not entirely accurate. So it's opened to uh, to uh, 102, which is slightly above what a 7 would be. So it's in between a 7 and a 7 star right now. I guess I'll set it at a seven. So a couple of things that can cause the shrillness. If you scratch like a needle file across the baffle like this, you can see that the baffle is, is above this a certain line so that the file actually scratches here. It shouldn't scratch anywhere on the baffle, regardless of what type of um, baffle it is. It should move back and forth on the inside of the tip rail. So the baffle is way too high. So this is one of the places where the shrillness could come from. It could also come from uh, the curve towards the tip being too high. Um, uh, but it looks like there might be a bunch of different things that are um, going on with this mouthpiece here. So, so definitely the baffle is too high. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to measure it now and then we'll have a look. If you're new to the channel, please remember to click subscribe and also like the video if you like it. So you can already see with the break here that it, it kind of closes at 48, but it's very squishy. So it, it should stop really clean and really hard. And it opens up more down on the right side here. So it's kind of up here, but it's, it's, it's very inaccurate. The table is probably not completely flat. So I'm just going to press really far forward on the table so I can get some kind of idea on one what the intended numbers were. If you have a mouthpiece that you would like me to have a look at, either do an assessment like this or have me reface the mouthpiece, you can contact me through my website. I'll leave the link in the uh, description below. Aside from the um, not flat table and a lot of asymmetry in the facing, the way that these numbers are laid out um, correspond with what the customer's complaint was about this mouthpiece. I don't think that this was refaced by a professional refacer because these numbers, they are not in the ballpark of anything that would actually be considered playable by, by uh, you know, an advanced player. Okay, so now I wrote down the numbers for 48 length facing and the numbers for 50 length facing. This is a typical facing for what, what, traditionally would be on um but a, on a mouthpiece like this uh you can see that it starts at 48 here and then this area all the way up to here just opens way too slowly and when it especially in this area down here if it opens that slow you definitely have no low end response and all this stuff contributes to shrillness so when you look at the mouthpiece you have the baffle being too high right here and then a super shrill facing. So this, this mouthpiece is going to be uh, quite ridiculous. One more thing that's a little weird about this mouthpiece is that the tip rail doesn't match with the tip profile of a reed, which is not unusual, but this is kind of drastic. That was a Rigardi style reed. This is a Lavas. And the problem is that you can't like you have to hang over either hang over or not cover the inside of the tip rail so that's one of the things that i'm going to fix on this uh, reface as well i just played it it plays pretty awful it's a long time since i've tried a mouthpiece that was as weird as this <laughs> so um all right i'll get into it 